You are listening to the Our View podcast, where we aim to educate, raise awareness, and change the tone of conversation about disabilities. Every week, we bring you episodes that are centered around topics related to disabilities. As the host, it is my hope that you are not just inspired by these stories that are shared, but that you put some action behind your inspiration to do something that improves the lives of those who live with disabilities. I thank you, our loyal listeners, for your support and remind you to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Our View for Life and to leave us a review on Apple Podcasts to tell us what you enjoy most about the podcast. Let's get into this conversation. I would like to welcome everyone back to another episode of the Our View podcast, where we aim to educate, raise awareness, and change the tone of conversation about disabilities. I am back today with a brand new episode with my guest, Daisy Hillbrands. And Daisy, thank you so much for joining me today and um, being open to sharing your story. I'm excited for you to uh, share your story with uh, our listeners today. Thank you very much. And I'm uh, feeling very welcome of being here. Uh, I am one of those who do like to share my story. Yes, yes. So to start off our conversation, can you share a little bit um, about who you are and tell us who is Daisy? (laughs) Yes, uh, I'm uh, 42 years old. I'm original Danish. I'm living in Germany and also part time as a digital nomad. Um, I have my own uh, coaching business. Or where I work as a transformative coach, so I work with people's mindset uh, most of the time. I also do have a, he- a heavy dyslexia I have had my whole life, um, who has also uh, affected me my whole life and also, of course, affect me now when I'm running my own business. <laughs> wow. Did you, did you say you're living in Germany? Yes. Oh, wow. That's great. I didn't realize mm. that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm over in New Jersey, and um, Mm. it's always interesting when I um, set up these times, I always set them up, uh, you know, around my schedule, but then it's, Mm. you know, it can be difficult for other people who live in other countries because it's, you know, it's nighttime there already, uh, Mm -hmm. where where you are, it's two o'clock in the afternoon here, but (laughs) so, wow, that's really great. I'm glad to, uh, you know, I'm even more glad to have you now knowing that you're in Germany and you took the time to uh to join us today Mm. but um so you you mentioned that you uh have dyslexia so can you share with us and explain um to us what your understanding of what dyslexia is and how it has impacted your life and your career um Mm. as a scientific researcher and now as a coach yes uh what do you say uh the easiest, what you say, what people most uh, see with the lecture and also where it, it be, it's uh, most people catch it themselves, that is within the spelling. It is very hard for a person to with uh, the lecture to spell correct. But it does really cause for, there is no connection in my brain uh, in the way you say a word and which letters are connected, connected to them. There is no whatsoever connection between those two. Uh, so, for example, also, if I want to, um, if I'm writing something and I ask uh, my partner to help me, how do you spell this? He needs to spell it letter by letter. Because normally, if I ask someone, how do you spell impossible, people will say impossible. And I'm just like, mm, yeah, right, that doesn't help me at all. <laughs> So it is really having that connection of these um, letters together make this sound. That one is non-existing. Wow, that's you explain that so well. Like it doesn't, it doesn't connect. Like you said, with mm. you know, you need to see the letters letter by letter um, yeah. to make that connection of how the word is spelled. Um, that's really. I'm, I'm glad you use that that visual and and use those words to. Uh, you know, for how, how to explain it for you. Um, because I, I think for every, well, I, I don't think I know for every person it can show up differently. So mm. for somebody else who has dyslexia, it can be something else that doesn't make sense to them. And <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's important um, for everybody to share their individual experience mm. of, um, you know, of how it impacts them. And uh, 
so you mentioned that you're you're a coach. So how um, how uh, have you found strategies and tools uh, to be helpful in um, you know your living with your diagnosis of dyslexia in your uh, profession? Yeah, uh, for example, uh, I do. I have a website. I'm active on social media, and a lot of that part is written. Um, so I do have tools who help me to write, uh, mm -hmm. literally help me to write. Um, and I'm also I have everything I am posting uh, with uh, 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 someone else needs to read it to just make sure there is mm -hmm. not too many errors in it. Um, but one thing there is also with uh, the lecture, there is different types of method uh, you can learn how to live with your uh, the lecture. Um, so for me to write, uh, I'm using uh, what do you say a little bit uh, photo uh, recognition. So I know if I put these letters together, it's it is this word. So I have a really big memory of a lot of lot of words. And that is how how I, I am capable of uh, writing, but it means, for example, if words are close to its get each other, for example, uh, thought and through, I have no idea. I can never spell one of them because for me it it is the same. Mm -hmm. They are too close to each other. So there, I do need programs that who's not only what you would say seeing the spelling error, but also analyzing the full sentence of what is the meaning with, behind the sentence and can say, hey, this just looks wrong. Mm -hmm. I think you were meant to write this. And I also have a program who read up to me what I have written. So I'm in that way can hear if I have used the right words. Wow, that is... um. There, there are, are always, um, you know, strategies that people use for certain things, even, mm. um, you know, with myself uh, having a physical disability, there are certain things that I have to do differently and, and things that work for me. So uh, I, I wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, I was able to ask you about strategies that you use that are helpful uh, yeah. for you and the uh, thought and through those are that, that those two. <laughs> Those two words yeah. are <laughs> every. I think a lot of people have to go through their own minds and say, like, okay, how do you spell? <laughs> how do you spell? Yeah. That? <laughs> yes, and there is a lot of also where you can say the meaning is very um, different from each other, but in my mind they just look the same. So now I don't know how uh, adult friendly your your audience is. Um, mm -hmm. A good example is at uh, some point, point uh, I have bought uh, a hard drive uh, I needed to connect uh, to my TV uh, in order to re uh, record from the TV. <laughs> and I couldn't get the connection to work at all. So I, I went to an online forum uh, to get help on how to make the right connection here. And I wrote in the heading, I have a, um, a problem. Uh, not I have a problem with my hard drive. I have a problem with my hard stick. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oops. <laughs> yeah, oops. And the spelling control didn't take that because those two words together also make sense. <laughs> yeah. So that was just like I got some really funny uh, comments about that one. Um and what do you say, what I normally do in forums where I am quite active, I do mm -hmm. in my footer, uh, simply write, I have dyslexia, bear over with me. Mm -hmm. So people are aware of if something I post sounds nonsense or doesn't make sense, that is why. Yeah, that is, um, that's really great and, and really important that you do post, you know, that you make it known that you have dyslexia. That's really um you know, to put it out there. That's really, really yes. great. That's cool that you are, um, that you're so comfortable and open enough to share that because I think by, um, by again, by sharing our stories and, and telling our experiences, it helps other people. I think that, um, you know, for a long time, even, you know, I, I can't hide my disability. I use crutches, I use a wheelchair. Mm. Um, but, you know, at, at times there were 
times where it was, you know, I was sad or, or, you know, ashamed of having a disability mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, but to be able now as, you know, a fully grown adult and I've, I've been talking about my disability for a long time and I've been okay, mm -hmm. uh, with living and having a disability for a very long time. But as a kid, you know, I can remember not really being open to talking about it and, um, in my family, I know we really didn't talk about it. It was just something that was accepted that I had a disability. <laughs> um, so uh, to be open like that, like you said, to uh, post and, and say, hey, I have a disability, I have, I have dyslexia, you know, bear with me. Uh, mm. You know, that's really a great thing to uh, to share with people just so they have an understanding of yeah. uh, of who you are. But that that was a great story of your hard drive. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. That's, and it goes that way sometimes. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and of, and of course, also uh, talking about being young, uh, I also have, like you said, I have a scientific uh, background, so I have been uh, on the university and studied microbiology, which is quite, uh, what do you say, a, a heavy uh, study to, uh, to take. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I can remember uh, I was what do you say? Uh, I was diagnosed with the uh, dyslexia quite young. Uh, it was luckily catched quite long. It also meant that when I started university, I have all the helping tools you can get when you have dyslexia. There is a lot of helping tools that is made with uh, for people with dyslexia, which is very very nice. Um, mm -hmm. But I it took me quite some time to come over the fear of people seeing me as unintelligent because I couldn't formulate myself in writing. Wow. Uh, that took me quite some times before that felt good. Uh, okay, this is who I am. I can't change it. Uh, there's no tools in the world who can make this so I can write perfectly in everything. Mm -hmm. um, and I did have a lot of fears when I was younger of, of being seen as unintelligent, or especially when I started to apply for, for, for my uh, first job within my fields, because I knew I had to write scientific reports. I knew I had to write uh, lab uh, reports. I knew I had to do research. So reading up on new subjects. Uh, um, so I know there was part of my, my job where I would be challenged and I will not be as fast as others. Um, and also just writing a job application of when you have the lecture and make a good job application. That was also like, oh, how, how do I do this? Mm -hmm. Wow. <clears throat> yeah, that is, um, I, that's something I, I never thought of that, you know, that mm -hmm. you would be perceived as not being intelligent because of your, your writing because of, um, you know, and it's especially at the university level and especially in that field you were uh, you were in writing is a big, you know, it's a really big thing, a big component of the work that you're doing. So, um, yes. wow. But, you know, you obviously knew what you were doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And also what you say, being open about having uh, a disability. So having a uh, dyslexia, I never for uh, an application wrote, I have dyslexia, but if I, if I was called for an interview, I always said it by mm -hmm. the end of the interview, both because I do need some special program on what co either computer they put available for me. And yeah, it does also affect uh, how uh, what do you say, how I perform my work. Uh, mm -hmm. Some things I'm very fast at, and some things just takes me longer. Um, there is also within the last uh, couple of years, there have been a lot of uh, research on what is called uh, dyslexia thinking. Um, mm. So what lies, uh, to, what do you say, to the cause of dyslexia, it is a little bit on the way uh, your brain works and makes connections. Uh, and it's have shown that that also, in fact, gives some uh, quite good uh, other skills there haven't really been uh, awareness of before. So mm. for example, putting together very complex idea, most people with dyslexia has much easier to do because how our society is built up, we are already trained in thinking of other ways of handle and have other st uh, strategies. Wow. So we already wired to see solutions uh, everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, something that you said that I um, 
that I didn't have written down uh, that I just thought about because of what you said. Um, here in the in the United States, we have the Americans with Disabilities Act, which um, allows for um, someone who is applying for a job or who gets hired for a job to request reasonable accommodations for them to perform the job um, that they you know they were hired to do. Uh, so me having a physical disability, I can request a special desk that my wheelchair that I can wheel my wheelchair under and things like that. Um, it just made me think, is, is there something like that where you live a law in place where you could ask the company to, um, you know, have programs for you uh, that would help uh, with, yeah. you know, with your dyslexia? Yes, uh, I will say uh, within the EU, so Germany is part of the EU, but also mm -hmm. other European countries is not part of EU. Uh, uh, Dilexia is uh, recognized as a disability and you will get government help uh, in the degree you need. Uh, mm -hmm. And it can be different thing. For example, when I was uh, at university, I got, uh, when I have to write my thesis and I have to turn into a uh, big assignment, I had I had a secretary, so wow. I I wrote the most myself. But I had a secretary I met with once a week where we went over what I have been written, uh, so to make sure that I did make myself understandable in in my written. Um, for exams, there is written exams. There you have longer time if you have a uh, dyslexia. So you get more time and you're also allowed to use, for example, programs who read uh, out to you what you have written to make sure uh, that you have answered the question correct or programs where you you talk to the program and it writes what you are saying. So there is a lot of options uh, to have. And you can also have a secretary, for example, a job if you are in the need of that. Uh, if mm -hmm. you, uh, I managed quite well to, uh, what you say with the, myself, uh, but yeah, for the, for example, for my thesis, I chose to have a secretary because I knew otherwise it, this would just be too overwhelming of having to write a 60 page scientific thesis without any help. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I, um, like I said, I just thought of that and I said, oh, I, mm -hmm. I wonder, cause I'm not familiar with, I've only lived in, in the United States. So I was wondering yes. if, um, you know, what accessibility and, um, you know, what laws there are over in, in mm -hmm. Germany and other countries that, that you would know about. So thank you for, yeah. for sharing that. That's um, really, really good to know. It's, it's I'm glad mm -hmm. that um, I just had a conversation uh, on social media earlier today with someone about um, how far things have come, but how far they still need to go as far as accessibility for people. Um, mm. and making things and accommodations for people with different disabilities. And, you know, it's, it's getting there, but, uh, you know, still needs some improvement, but uh, yeah. everybody, everybody's working toward it and moving in the right direction. So I think that's mm. the, uh, a good thing that needs to be acknowledged. Yeah. Um, so um, I was interested in if you were, um, if you are aware of any resources, websites, books, um, or anything else that you could recommend for children or adults who um, have recently been diagnosed with dyslexia or who, you know, think mm. they might have dyslexia? Yes, uh, I will say for both, it's both a website, but it's also a book. Uh, and both of them is called This Is Dyslexia. And they also talk a lot about what are the benefits of having a dyslexia, because that can also be a nice input to, to get. But they also, the website will also, you can search for which country you are in, and then they will connect you with, uh, with the right people of getting help. Um, also, when people ask me about dyslexia, for example, I think my child has dyslexia, I say, go and get it tested. There is mm -hmm. official tests that will show if uh, you or your child have dyslexia, because a lot of the help you can get and special programs and things like that, you do need to be diagnosed. Mm -hmm. So that is the first step, find out if you have it, and then you 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 take it from next uh, from there, and also the official test sites will uh, for, for each country quite often list where do you go next. Yeah, that's great. Thank you for uh, for that reference. I'll make sure that that we uh, mm. post that in the show notes. Um, yeah. You know, just because it, it's always helpful to have um, you know resources, and I like that. Um, you know, this the website seems to be a uh, worldwide. 
uh, you know, type of website. So you can post, uh, you can check in from wherever you are and see yep. uh, what resources and things are available where mm -hmm. you live. So that's uh, always a, a plus. Um, mm -hmm. So my, my last question, and I try to switch up these last questions. I'm trying to do a little different thing uh, mm -hmm. to just, you know, to switch it up a little bit. Um, yeah. So I wanted to ask you, what do you think of the phrase you are the sum of the five people you spend the most time with. Mm. <laughs> so that that is a good, quite a coaching question, and yes, in fact, uh, <laughs> so so to say, uh, I think for me, you are just not the sum of the people you spend your time with. You're also the sum of your culture and of your of your uh, of your story. So mm -hmm. it's not just the people, but yeah, the people you do spend time with does uh, affect you. Uh, also the way you see the world and the way you think, but your culture also brings into there that, and also the story you brings with you. And also I will say how open-minded you are. So mm -hmm. are you the type who constantly are seeking new input, new information? <laughs> then perhaps you become the person who are affecting the five persons around you wow <laughs> that was good <laughs> that was really good and so true i think um you know and, and our experiences that we've had in life definitely uh you know influence and, and make us who we are and how we respond mm -hmm. to those things that have happened in our life and like you said our culture um you know the the environment and, and places we've we've been and and experience that that is also mm. true and um i thought about that question for myself and i thought about the five people i spend the most time with and i'm just like yeah i can i can definitely agree, <laughs> agree <laughs> with that <laughs> and i'm I, I was just thinking of it from you know from the aspect of you know the five people i, I thought of they're they're funny um mm. they're they're kind they're giving um empathetic and and those types of you know other adjectives i could think of to describe those five people and mm. i'm just like yeah that is that is who i am and i'm i'm happy about that um yes. and that that's the good thing <laughs> i thought of definitely the, yes yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah i thought of those uh mm. i thought of the the things that came to mind uh the fastest were all mm. very positive things so it, it really that really made me happy to realize that that i'm uh spending time with good people. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, um, and just before we go, can you mention uh, and share with everyone what your website is and your social media site so they can follow you? Because I would love to uh, yes. have people connect with you and, and uh, learn more about you and the work that you're doing. Yes. I will say uh, my website is uh, hillpunts.coach. Uh, there is a link to all my social media from that one, but also as I have a quite unique name. So if you Google Daisy Hilfrans, you will find me wherever I'm present. Yes, <laughs> that's great. But uh, Daisy, thank you so much for your time today. I am, uh, again, so happy that you uh, have shared your story with us all and um, provided such great knowledge and information about uh, dyslexia and the importance of, like you said, getting diagnosed and not just mm. assuming that you have it because um, once you have a proper uh, and true diagnosis of it, uh, there are resources and um, a lot of assistance and help that, that can be available to you, uh, you know, once you have the diagnosis. So um, thank you again um, for, for being with us today and sharing your story. I really enjoyed uh, this time. Thank you very much. Uh, and I just want uh, to put into our end note, why is for people who have trouble with spelling and word, why is it called dyslexia? Mm -hmm. I don't think any person who has dyslexia can spell dyslexia. <laughs> <laughs> right. It, it always, every time I have to write it, I'm just thinking, this is the most stupid word to have chosen different. for people who, who, who can't make the connection between letters and words <laughs> it is it's a very very hard word to spell with all the with an x and a y and all in there it's like what <laughs> yeah 
<laughs> Couldn't be a more basic word. <laughs> yeah. So I uh, just to share, I like the Danish one. Uh, I'm not going to say what it is in Danish, but the direct, uh, direct tra uh, translation meet word blind. Oh. Yeah. So, cool. so that one I like because it also really say what the problem is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And that, that is exactly the way that you explained it too. So it, mm. it, it makes complete sense. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. But thank you so much. And I, um, I look forward to uh, sharing this story with everyone. And uh, thank you so much and have a good day. Yeah, thank you very much for having me and a good day to you also. This concludes this episode of the Our View podcast. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and on our YouTube channel. You can also follow us on all social media platforms at Our View for Life. That's O-U-R-V-I-E-W, the number four, L-I-F-E. If you have a topic or a person, or if you are a person who would like to be interviewed for an upcoming episode of the podcast, send us a DM on Instagram, send us a message on Facebook, or you can email me at ourviewforlife at gmail.com. Thanks for listening.